hello everyone welcome back to the next video in this video i will show you how to integrate app shortcuts as well as siri shortcuts for x4 react native ios application so let's get started let me explain you what we will be doing uh, by showing you guys uh, the code so here is uh, the simulator running and here i have one update button as well as one uh, value which is stored inside user defaults uh, now if you don't know what user defaults is it is basically used for storing key value data now many of you might be wondering why we are using user defaults we can use async storage as well but the problem with async storage is um, we uh, need to you like we can't really call async storage from native code right we need to write some uh, native code for the shortcuts api as well as for siri shortcuts as well now i don't know whether behind the scene a sync storage uh, uses uh, user defaults or not that's why just to be on the safer side i'm using user defaults so user defaults is a native ios api used for storing key value data so yeah let's get started uh, so whenever i click on the button the value is incremented uh, and store it inside user default so here i'll just click on this button here you can see like i have clicked on it multiple times uh, that's why it is going from directly jam, uh, jump to level because i clicked on it multiple times uh, so here you can see the value is 18 now uh, also uh, okay anyways uh, i'll come back to that later on uh, now here is this value is 18 right now what i can do is i can just go to my app shortcuts so in simulator you can uh, go to this particular utilities folder go to shortcuts and scroll down uh, sometimes it might take your app to reflect on the shortcuts app but here it is already showing it for me so the shortcut name is inc inc increase counter so i'll just click on it okay and here you can see it has incremented the counter now if i go back to map here you can see value automatically updated to 19 so just to show it to you one more time i'll just uh, click on it uh n number like few more times like i'm clicking on it multiple times and if i just go back over here you here you can see value is 26 now coming to siri shortcuts uh there is one like siri shortcuts is extremely finicky sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't uh now you need to give some uh message to siri shortcut as well like uh, just to show you guys the code like i'll show you the entire code later on but just to let you know uh like we need to tell uh we need to have a specific list of commands we i can't just randomly see anything in siri shortcut will automatically no come to know it about it so here you can see i'm selling saying that increase increase counter or increase counter to whatever is our application name so my application name is just my app like i said siri shortcut is a bit finicky sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't i'll just click on this done okay uh, now uh, on the simulator as well you can try siri shortcut but i'm not sure if it work it will work or not like sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so i'll just go to device i'll click on siri and i'll say increase counter to my app increase counter to my app okay i think it is yeah it will not work yeah like if you get something like this it will not work definitely it will not work. i'll just dismiss this again i'll try it one more time like i told you the series extremely finicky sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't increase counter okay so it is not working but yeah maybe you can try it on your side maybe try it on a real device but anyways so let's get started right so first uh, we need to go to this particular url uh, to create an expo react native project now there are different templates for creating this projects so we will be using this blank typescript template so i will be uh, just copying this particular uh, uh, like uh, command to create expo react native project using this blank typescript template the advantage is that it is has very less boilerplate code and it also has typescript support that's why i'm using it now we need to give our app some name so it will ask us for an app name i'll just give it give it as my app you can name it whatever you feel like so let it do its thing uh, in the the next step which we need to follow is we'll just have to go to this particular url and just open it in a new tab uh, so first we need to go to the android device uh, go to de select development build 
I have disabled ES because we will be building it locally then select Mac OS I have already installed this command I have already installed this I have already installed this I have already installed Android Studio and I have already done all the required setup which is necessary for which is mentioned in the documentation uh, okay then I have already set this Android home path as well and I have also set this uh, Z shell or environment variables inside our shell then we need to run this particular command so I'll just copy it and here we'll have to cd to our app so our app has finished installing I'll run this command so let's just wait uh, for this to finish uh, in the meantime what we can do is we'll just scroll down and copy this command as well so this will basically help us to create the uh, android folder for us uh, so this will actually create the uh, native android code which is necessary so i'll just copy this command and paste it again this will uh, run some things and it will create the android folder for us so don't worry too much about it uh, okay so that's it for the android part then you will have to go to the ios device part again select development build here you can disable ES. I have already installed Xcode as well I have already installed Xcode command line tools as well I have already installed watchman uh, we have already ran this command uh, so we don't need to run it again if you want you can run it and then we need to run this particular command so I'll just copy this uh, so here you can see uh, like before I uh, run this particular command here you can see for that Android command which we ran I get this error now this is not really an error it is because uh, I don't have an Android emulator installed and I have not connected my real Android device that's why it is throwing me this error uh, it's not really an error uh, in your case it might be uh, might have selected the uh, Android emulator whichever you have installed or a real device if you have connected it to your uh, laptop uh, but yeah we don't need to run it again you can just do Control C uh, to dismiss this because we haven't written any code so no point in running it again same thing happen same thing will happen for iOS as well but for iOS have do have a simulator installed uh, any which ways we are not going to test it on an uh, emulator or a simulator I'll test it on a real device then I'll just paste this command now this will take a little bit of time to run because it needs to uh, do all the cocoa pod installation as well so let it do its thing in the meantime what I want to show it to you is this particular docs so this will help us to create the uh, native modules for us in which we will be writing all the required necessary code so here is the uh, this is how we add a new module but we'll need to wait for this ios command to finish so let it finish then i'll come back and show it show the next steps to you okay uh, so here you can see it is asking me to run it on a simulator i won't run it i will just press ctrl c uh, then like i mentioned we need to copy this command and paste it over here now this will ask us few questions like what should be our module name and all that stuff I'll keep everything as default and just press enter 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 and let it do its thing now given that uh, we have installed uh, this particular module uh, for iOS we again need to run this pod installation command for our module as well so just go this and just paste this command as well uh, again now let it do its thing this is just a cheat sheet which I have created so don't get too confused again this will take a bit of time uh, so let it do its thing here you can see it is installing that module so what I will do now is I'll just remove this okay I'll just open our project so I'll just go so here is my project now what I'll do is I will uh, write down all the necessary code come back and then explain it to you uh, and show you guys the output as well go through the code uh, so first you will have to uh, go to this modules my module you will have to go to src and here you will have to go to my module dot uh, so here I have defined two methods one is save value and second one is to get the value and it returns a number so whatever is present inside user defaults so these three methods were present by default so I have not uh, I'm not really using them so these are the two methods save value and get value which I have defined then uh, inside the ios folder i have created this my module dot swift file so again i'll just scroll up so like i told you we are using key value data right so here we are we have to use this user defaults key uh, so this is the key which i'm using you can you name it whatever key you want but do remember this name because this name will be used in a lot other places as well now this again this code is present by default i have not uh, touched any of this again this code is also present by default then here is our method called get value so the name should be same what you have defined it inside your typescript file and then we are using user defaults 
now this is the suit name so typically this is my bundle identifier i'll tell you uh, so i'll just show it to you now only how to create your own bundle identifier you just have to go to your app go to ios and double click on this dot xe workspace it will open it for you in xcode then you will have to go to my app and here you will have to go to sign in and capabilities i'll just delete this particular part because i want to show it to you again so here you will have to give your app some bundle identifier don't use my bundle identifier you can use whatever you feel like typically it is com dot your company name dot your app name now we need to create an app group as well uh, just to share data so i'll uh, create an app group and here i'll just click on this plus button and i'll just paste our bundle identifier after group dot and i'll just click on ok uh, okay so once that is done uh, same bundle identifier or same app group identifier you will have to use it over here group dot whatever is your bundle identifier okay so that's what we are doing now some of you might be thinking that why i'm not using user defaults dot standard uh, i i mean the problem with user defaults dot standard is it won't be able to share your user default state with shortcuts app as well i could be wrong but that's my, what my understanding is that's why i'm use, using user default suit name in case if you don't understand what i'm saying just ignore it uh, here we just have to pass your own suit name and here we just get value which is present inside user defaults and return it back in case if there is no value we return zero and here is our save value uh, uh, method again we get hold of our user defaults we get the current value we increment it by one we set it to user defaults and return the value and here we return zero back uh, so yeah uh, that's it uh, that's all the code there is uh, then you will have to uh, let's see how to use it first go to app.tsx and uh, there is one more thing which i forgot is uh, i'll define one more use effect okay coming back to our code so first you will have to import this touchable opacity view from react native as well as this module and use state use ref and you um, use effect from react then here is our use state which is value is zero ignore this for now uh, inside use effect i'm just getting whatever is the current value as soon as the app is launched but this particular thing i have used this entire particular thing i've just copied it from the react documentation react native documentation so this is called every time your apps comes in foreground so suppose you move your app to the background you go to the shortcuts app you increase your value by one and then you come back so the app is in foreground right so it from it came from background to foreground so this use effect will not get called in 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 fact this use effect will get called so that's why once the app is in foreground again i'm doing the same thing my module dot get value and we are just setting the value to it uh, okay then here is our touchable opacity button and on click of it we just do set value my module dot save value uh, like whatever is the uh, value we get we just increment it by one that logic is handled on the native i side like i just showed shown it to you over here and there is this button uh, sorry text element which we are just displaying whatever is the current value okay uh, yeah then again come back to xcode and here you will have to create two files so uh, swift files so to create a swift file okay sorry to create a swift file you can just right click on your app a new empty file and you firstly give it name as counter series shortcut then again uh, do right click new empty file and name it as counter shortcut intent okay so i have already created th those two files so i'll just delete this untitled file which i have created so first uh, this counter shortcut intent so this is for the shortcuts thing so we are importing app intents as well as swift ui and this is uh, available only from ios 16 and above so we are extending app intent again this is the same user defaults key which we def uh, define it inside this my module so make sure it's the same uh, then uh, this title can be anything like uh, this will uh, basically what the user sees once they go to the shortcut of your app and this method we are overriding from this app intent so here again we are doing the same logic so whenever the button is clicked we are incrementing the counter right so the logic is same what we had over here inside the save value so we just get hold of our user defaults we get the current value we increment it by one and save it back to user defaults and uh, given that this is async we have to return it something like this dot result dialog increased counter 
okay uh, because uh, when you increase a counter from the uh, shortcuts app we are displaying a notification kind of thing right uh, inside that notification we are displaying this so you can again change this to whatever you feel like then inside this counter cd shortcut this is even easier so we just have to import app intents and here we have to use app shortcuts provider and here is our app shortcuts now here we are just passing the same file which we had created like counter shortcut intent so same file we are passing as an intent and here you can write your own phrases what you want to do so i have just uh, written two phrases increase counter to and the short title is also increase counter and here you need to provide some system image so yeah that's that's all i have done uh, yeah that's it um, and now you can uh, run your application and see the output that's it thank you for watching bye